Hello, this is Pastor Terry Goodman, and I want to welcome you to the Wesleyan Connection. This podcast is primarily for the clergy and laity of the Holston Annual Conference. Join with me now as I take a look around the Connection and share some of the things happening in the churches of our annual conference. In today's episode, we're going to be asking this question. How do you go from being a chapel to being the church? Somewhere along the way, the church, which began as a movement rather than an institution, uh, has become a, a static kind of entity. Uh, it seems like we have lost our ability to respond to the culture around us and in many cases some would say we have let the culture change us and so this idea of cultural Christianity in which yes it's okay to think about church it's okay to give a, a nod to church every now and then but it, church is more than just a nod it's more than just a thought every now and then church a, a way in which we have to become involved in the propagation of the gospel. Church is the way in which we share the good news and make a difference in the world around us. And somehow we seem to have forgotten that, and as a result, we have become what we probably never should have become. And so I invite you to join in on the conversation in this podcast as we talk about uh, moving from being a chapel to a church and cultural Christianity and the why of what it means to be the church. I hope you enjoy our conversation around the table at a recent Big Stone Gap district leadership team meeting. Well, I guess my my issue, it really boils down to it, is not even the golden cast. It's how do you get them to go from being a chapel to a church? Yeah. Mm. Chapel's all about me. Mm. I come in to get the warm fuzzies and get the pat on the back. And that sermon that just makes me feel so good about myself and my family and mm. has nothing to do with what are we supposed to be doing. I have armor of God out at the door and just gift each one as they go out. Put your <laughs> armor on when you go out. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that's, that's a really good statement. Yeah, that is a you really know. good question. Uh, Tom Rainer talks about it, I think, in terms of cultural Christianity. You know, our churches are, are caught up with an idea of what church is and the, what the culture has said church is, and in the process they've lost the true meaning of what the church is. So... That's, that's my one bit of insight here. <laughs> well, so I think it is. That's the other thing that I kept thinking of talking about in, in Jacksonville when we were down there is Methodism used to be a movement, mm-hmm. and we need to get back to that. Mm-hmm. We need to be a movement, not a, a church. Not a, not necessarily a church. I forget the other word, but we become an institution. Right. Yeah. We need to be a movement instead of an institution. Yeah. Because what we've, we've come... We've become focused on saving the institution. I think that, you know, for me, you know, all three of these comes back, and I don't know whether y'all experience this, but, but for me it's very real because you present this to people. <coughs> you know you're going to get, you know you're going to get pushback. You know, I mean, you, you, you're going to get it. But yet it seems like that no matter how much you just keep on coming back, keep on coming back, and maybe, you know, maybe this is something that, that really just is, it seems like that there's just always more pushback. More pushback. Mm-hmm. That it almost feels like that you're climbing Mount Everest. You know? Um, I think about Jesus in that. You know, Jesus bless his heart with his disciples you know and us us included before the resurrection it was totally you know, I don't get it you know, I have no clue what he's saying and even after the resurrection there was still that but with that said you know the resurrection changed everything you know how do we get a resurrection moment in the church so that they really get it you know 
I had more negative feedback about a sermon that said it's not about the building and it's not about your comfort zone. It's about working for the kingdom to bring in new souls. I got more negative feedback than for any sermon I've preached in over 13 years. Mm -hmm. What that said tells me is it hit home. It made them feel bad. So they, they, uh, yeah, they don't want to feel bad. They don't. Yeah. They don't want to be told what they're doing is wrong. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, and I had that happen a number of years ago. Sandy was working in a home health in another community, and her boss was a member of the big Baptist church in the area. And she was lamenting one time at lunch. I'd go have lunch with them every once in a while. She was. You know, she she wanted to go to church and feel good about herself. And every time she goes, she feels bad. But all she wanted was to go feel good about herself. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that's not the point. That's not why we go to church. So how do we stress the why? Because I think if we can get people to understand the why, why we're doing these things. What? Well, this is something that this happened Sunday before Thanksgiving. We always have a joint Thanksgiving service with First Baptist in Jonesville, and so this time it was their their time to cook um, for everybody. And then I, I was the visiting preacher. We just switched back and forth Eastern Thanksgiving, and um, so you know preached that Sunday night, and everything went well, and we all joined together in fellowship. And then the next morning, I got all these texts about why I resigned. From the church, and they were coming from people in the courthouse that I'm friends with. I said, well, "What are you talking about?" Well, we heard that you resigned, and I thought, "I got to stop this." You know, this is Oops. kind of crazy, and everything goes. It's First of all, nobody talked that to the DS, but <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. But what what had happened was, is the First Baptist pastor, he and I are pretty good friends, and I don't know why he didn't tell me something. He resigned Sunday morning during church service, and it was over. He wanted to go be with his grandchildren in Tennessee and everything, but. They've copied a lot of things that we were doing. We built a family life center, then they've been one three times larger than ours, and they're a million dollars in debt, ten thousand dollars a month mortgage payment. They started doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but but now they don't know. The, we can teach them something about lowering the interest rate so that you don't have ten thousand. <coughs> they don't really know the why because they weren't really using their life center for the community. It was just for them. And, you know, and they, they started doing the hanging of the greens, and now they're they're doing the hanging of the greens like you're almost in the second or third Sunday of Advent, and they have no clue that it's connected to Advent. They're just doing some things that we were doing, and so now a lot of the parishioners that are in the Lions Club that I work with, they're just thinking, why are we doing all these things, Lane? Why? I'm thinking, yeah, I know what I was thinking, but I wasn't <laughs> going to tell them. But but the question become now that church is going to be hurting tremendously with a ten thousand dollar a month mortgage payment for the next nine years yes yeah they still owe about nine hundred thousand on it and it cost a million and a half and he just up and resigns and everything and he's a good fellow i really like him but he used that whole thing about his he wanted to see his grandchildren and everything and now they're really starting to say why did we do all this stuff you know and but there was a a few other things that they didn't they were just kind of doing things because other church in the community were doing it and now they really I haven't faced some hard questions and I think that why is a big question for everyone this is Pastor Goodman thanks for listening to this edition of the Wesleyan Connection be sure to check back often for more podcasts